welcome to this video and in this video we'll be looking at describing function as a frequency domain method of analyzing the behavior of nonlinear systems and therefore our topic is describing functions describing function can be defined as a frequency domain method or a frequency analysis method for predicting and analyzing the behavior of nonlinear systems is a frequency domain method for predicting the and or analyzing the behavior of the nonlinear systems any nonlinearity is subjected to a sinusoidal input and the output observed as a periodic function as follows so our nonlinearity is subjected to an input which is a sinusoid m of t to obtain an output n of t n of t is not necessarily sinusoidal but it's periodic and from that we can come up with a describing function of any given form of a nonlinearity by subjecting it to a sinusoidal input and observing its periodic output. While carrying out our analysis, we assume the following, or we make the following assumptions. Number one, that there is only one nonlinear element in the system, one nonlinear element in the system. And that is where we can on, analyze the behavior or the behavior of the output because we are subjecting our system to only one nonlinearity at a time. Number two, we assume that the nonlinearity component is time invariant. The nonlinearity component is time invariant. That means the nonlinearity does not change with time. If it is saturation, nonlinearity remains saturation all the way from t is equals to zero to infinity. Number three, corresponding to the sinusoidal input m of t, we only consider the fundamental component of the output n of t, and therefore we only consider the fundamental component of the output. That means we need to write the output in Fourier series or we expand it in Fourier series. And from the Fourier series expansion, we only take up the fundamental component as our output. And lastly, number four, we assume that the nonlinearity has odd symmetry. We assume that the nonlinearity has odd symmetry. Odd symmetry is symmetry about the origin and for symmetry about the origin, when you expand the function in Fourier series, the constant sum is always equal to zero. With those assumptions, then we can write our n of t as our periodic function, which is our output, expanded in Fourier series as follows, a constant a naught over two plus the summation of the terms n is equals to one to infinity, of a n, the cosine of n omega t, plus the summation of the terms from n is equals to one to infinity, of b n, the sine of n omega t, where a zero, a n, and b n are the coefficients or the constants obtained as follows. a zero is equal to one over t, the integral from zero to t of n of t dt, where t is the period of the function n of t. A n is defined as 2 over t, the integral from 0 to t of n of t multiplied by the cosine of n omega t d of omega t. And our constant b n is 2 over t, the integral from 0 to t of n of omega t sine n omega t d of omega t. And these are the values of the constants or the coefficients in our Fourier series expansion 
of our signal output n of t. Once we have our signal, remember for our n of t, we said we are only interested in the fundamental component. We are interested in the fundamental component being odd symmetry or the nonlinearity being of odd symmetry. Our constant a zero is zero, and therefore our n of t will be a one the cosine of omega t plus b one the sine of omega t. If we are to consider only the fundamental components of the output, this can also be written as can also be written as n the sine of omega t plus phi where n is the magnitude a1 squared plus b1 squared square root and phi is the tan inverse of b1 over a1. Okay. And therefore our n of t can be written as n at an angle of phi in phasor form, a magnitude and an angle in phasor form for our output n of t. If our output n of t is n at an angle of phi, the describing function is taken to be a ratio of the output to the input. Our input is m of t, which is m at an angle of zero, which was defined as m of t is equals to this m, sorry, our m of t is m, the sine of omega t. That means a magnitude m and a phase angle of zero. Our describing function n as a function of magnitude on omega can be written as the ratio of the output to input as n at an angle of phi over m at an angle of zero, which can be written as n over m, the sine of omega t plus phi, which can also be written as n1, the sine of omega t plus phi. And this is our describing function. From this mathematical description of the describing function, we notice that the describing function basically changes the output in terms of magnitude. The magnitude was m, the magnitude now is n1 defined by n over m, and also the changes in terms of phase. Initially was a phase angle of zero. Now it's a phase angle of phi defined by the tan inverse B1 over A1. And therefore the describing function basically, or in general is a function of both amplitude and frequency of the input sinusoid or the sinusoidal input. In my next discussion, I will look at the process of coming up with the describing function as a mathematical description of the output of the nonlinearity. And for purposes of demonstration, I will look at the two position relay. The two position relay and how we come up with the describing function. The two position relay is defined as follows or described as follows. So if this is our input and our output, the describing function rises suddenly and stays constant for all values of the input as well as on the negative side. And therefore the nonlinearity has a sudden rise at zero input and then for any other input stays at a constant value, say V, and this is negative V. If you are to look at the describing function out of our given system's nonlinearity, we are saying that we subject the nonlinearity N to a sinusoidal input M of T, and we observe our output N of T. The same is the same as the same can be obtained by taking a sinusoid, taking a sinusoid and looking at the modulation of the nonlinearity by the sinusoid as they travel together. To do that, we make the following 
a drawing. So our sinusoid is still, or our nonlinearity is the two position relay, which we can draw as follows. So constant at V and constant at negative V. Then down here, we draw our sinusoid. So we draw our sinusoid. So assuming this is our sinusoid, that's our sinusoid. Then we draw a line of 45 degrees from the nonlinearity. negative 45 degrees. And then we pick the various points of the sinusoid. So this is the first one. And we take this point up to form a new axis here. So we form a new axis here. Next, we can pick the pi. And we pick the two pi and we take this point up and this point as well, we take it up. Then we extend the magnitude of the sinusoid on both the negative, <coughs> sorry. So our value of the sinusoid can be plotted as follows. So the magnitude from this is pi and this is two pi for the period of the sinusoid is pi. And this is two pi. Our signal will have a magnitude V all the way up to this point, then changes to zero at pi and then to negative V all the way to two pi. And this becomes our periodic signal which is a description of our nonlinearity when subjected to the sinusoid. Our signal can be described as V for omega t. This is a omega t, and this is our sinusoid n of t. Can be written as omega t between 0 and pi has a value of V and has a value of negative v between pi and 2 pi. OK, so between 0 and pi has a magnitude v. Between pi and 2 pi has a magnitude negative v. And we proceed to determine n of t written in Fourier series. We pick the fundamental component of n of t from which we write our description of our describing function. Having written our function, then we know that because this is odd symmetry, symmetry about the origin, we can confirm this is symmetry about the origin. If we were to draw a straight line passing through the origin, we notice that the area on this side is the same as the area on this lower side, and therefore symmetry about the origin, a mirror image can be taken about the a line of passing through the origin, and this is odd symmetry. And for odd symmetry, we said that the constant A0 is equal to zero. We proceed to determine A1 and B1 from the signal. Our A1 is defined as the integral two over t, the integral from zero to t to t of n of t, the cosine of n omega t, because it is a one, then this is cos omega t, d of omega t. It's good to note that our t is two pi, our t is two pi, since the period is two pi. And if we integrate thing from zero to two pi, is the same as getting the integral from zero to pi and multiplying by two. We integrate from zero to pi and multiply by two because the area under the curve here is the same as the area under the curve in this region. And therefore our A1 can be written as two over t, which is two pi, multiplied by two, but the integral from zero to pi 
of n of t, n of t, the signal has a value of v between zero and pi, is therefore of v multiplied by the cosine of omega t d of omega t, which will be equal to two pi v, the integral of cos omega t is sine omega t and the limits are from zero to pi. The, cos the sine of pi is zero, the sine of zero is zero, and therefore our a1 will be equal to zero. Similarly, we can obtain our b1, which is the integral two over t, the integral from zero to two t of n of t, the sine of omega t d of omega t. Again, we take the same case, we integrate two over two pi, which is our t, multiplied by t, but now the integral from zero to pi of v, the sine of omega t d omega t, which will be equal to two v over pi, integral of sine omega t becomes the cosine of omega t negative between the values of zero and pi, which would be negative two v over pi, and then into the cosine of pi is negative one minus the cosine of zero is one, and this will give us four v over pi. 4v over pi. That means then we can write our sinusoid n of t to be the function 4v over pi, of course, at an angle of zero, at an angle of zero, not pi. Our describing function n, which is a function in magnitude and omega, is defined by the output for v over pi at an angle of zero divided by the input. The input is the sinusoid m at an angle of zero. And this will give us four v over pi m. And this becomes the describing function, which is the function that will approximately predict the behavior of the nonlinearity due to a two position nonlinearity and that is the end of my discussion on the nonlinear systems in my next video i'll be taking on a number of other nonlinearities and discussing the determination of the describing functions otherwise thank you for watching this video and i look forward to sharing in my next video